Hey all, it's Lawrence from Lawrence Creates and today I'm going to be giving you all a quick little demonstration of what I've been working on regarding my AI agent game studio. Now for this project I have kind of started from the ground up to build what I have today. Um, this version does not use Claude, this uses ChatGPT, currently uses GBT 4.0 um, and then eventually when the higher, I think it's IO or, or 1.0, whatever the newest model is, the, the high reasoning model, uh, I will have the functionality to be able to use that. Uh, reason why I'm not including it right now is that model is only open to like tier five members. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what's involved to get to like tier five. Uh, at the moment, I, th I think my OpenAI is telling me that I need to spend like $500 to get to tier 3. So you probably have to spend some absurd amount of money uh, to get to tier 5. So at the moment, I'm holding back on the uh, O1 model. Simply, or 1.0, what whatever it's called. Um, simply because I simply can't test it myself. Uh, so I don't know what uh, will happen if I like have the, the model use that. So, for the, for the time being, I am using the latest GPT-40 model, and this does seem to be working pretty well. Uh, so, it works very similarly to the previous one, but there are some slight differences. Um, and the reason I've reworked this one from the ground up is because I wanted to take a different approach. And my last model... Uh, we actually ended up having the code for whatever the agents made be sort of separate CS files as it does work in C sharp. Um, and that led to basically the AI not being able to one, load that code back incorrectly and then be able to recompile it. So I could never make uh, a loading system. And two, if you wanted to edit the code yourself and compile it, you'd have to create an entirely new project from scratch and figure out all the dependencies and just try and figure out how to make it work yourself. So you were completely reliant on the AI to get that project working and make sure it didn't run into any issues. This time around, which is, I'm, I'm pretty excited for this, but I don't know if you guys can read, but you can now create a project or load an existing project. That's right you know like if you run into issues if you run into errors you can now load the project back up so i've got a sort of an example one here that i've ended up making the exciting thing about this model is it doesn't just give you the code it creates an entire visual studio program for you um or or project for you so if i want to edit this game outside of the application i can I can do that. I will open it with my Visual Studio here. And this game, which by the way, all this code was created by the AI. Uh, it's, I can edit this. I can edit it. It works fine, whatever I wanna change. And then if I wanna recompile it with my own code, uh, change something here and there, I can just press the play button. It compiles the game and this is the little game that the AI made us. You can see you got health bars, you got a battery for the torch. If you're over the zombies and press left mouse button, you burn the zombies. And then if you run into it, you lose your, your health. The health's a little bit janky at the moment. Um, but basically what this allows you to do is sort of co-work with the AI. So you might say, for example, change this function or remove this function, right? You save it, you close it. I'm I'm saying this uh, as an example. I'm, uh, I'll show you with another project. But now let's just say, for example, I have changed that code. I can just type in load. This will say available projects. It will list the currently available projects in the projects directory. It will say enter the number of the project you want to load. It won't let you just do it any number. Right, it'll say invalid input. So you do need to put the number of the correct project. In this case, I want flash, uh, flash burn zombie zapper. That's the name it gave it. If I press one, it loads the project. Now this is a, I guess you could call this a legacy project. This is a project that was made before I had this system. And that's completely okay because now, because it can't find the design summary, 
it'll say no game idea found in selected project please enter the game idea so i'm not going to make it as in intense as, as the other one but i can just say something like a uh, game that we use a torch to burn the zombies something as simple as that next thing is pretty simple enter your feedback or changes you would like to make to the game i want to do something super simple uh make the health for the player the three uh oops, the three triangles green so that health that was at the top right those three triangles are our health currently in red by doing this this should now allow our ai to edit the project and make it green now i won't go through some of the features here i'm going to restart the project and uh, show you with a fresh clean one so once we get that code generated it will take a bit because it does need to basically when you're loading the project the ai will get the game design summary what you want fixed and the code but there we go it's generated new code for us uh, it'll say do you want the code reviewer agent to review the code for gameplay and feature improvements this is an automated thing so if you kind of can't figure out what you want added then you let this thing go wild it does actually help but in my case i only want the colors changed so i don't think i need the the code reviewer agent to do anything so i'll say no it'll say skipping code review proceed with the current code review the code above so this is where you just look over it make sure it is what you want uh in this case i am cool with it so I just go enter it'll say building the project don't mind that i don't know if you heard that but that was my phone uh, it said build successful so press enter to run the game should open up our game and hopefully in the top right there you go our health bar is now green so really easy to load in new projects or previous projects uh so now i'm gonna go and show you guys a bit of an example um regarding new projects so let me just sort of going way out here so second here so all these files you guys will get this is all required to run the agent studio um something that is missing from my pro project at the moment just during testing you will have again that text file where you need to put the open ai key uh, on the patreon page i will uh basically put a um like instructions on how to get the key and whatnot um so i'm gonna run the agent studio flip it to the side here ah uh, so uh first things first this time around when we, we want to create a new project when you go new it'll say enter your game idea In this case um i don't really know what to what to enter i wasn't prepared for this but uh let's just do what i usually do a farming simu oops, uh, simulator for us to plant, grow, and harvest corn for money. It'll say use custom art and sounds. In my case, I don't want any of that, so I'm going to say no. It'll say generating game name. This time around, it generates the game name first, um, and then it goes ahead and does the game design. So our game name is... Oh, didn't get that uh corn cornucopia harvest <laughs> what a name but you'll see in our projects folder we have it here and it started to create our project now down here it'll say do you want the code review agent to review the code for gameplay and feature improvements yes or no this time around i'm gonna say yes we want a secondary agent to look over this code and see if we can figure out if we can add anything to improve at the moment. It will then give a list of what it says it should improve. And it will say, do you want to regenerate the code based on the code review feedback? This time, I'm going to say yes. Regenerating the code based on code review feedback. So the programmer is now going to take all of these ideas and attempt to uh redo the code do keep in mind that this current project has a single file option only at the moment however what i found pretty useful is the open ai gpt has a higher token limit that, than claude so for the moment you can get pretty far with the ai using only one file i actually haven't run into any issues with the files that are cut off yet i might i may jinx myself here but at the moment that's been pretty good so 
After that, it says, do you want the code review agent to review the code for gameplay and feature improvements? This will be a looping process and you can get it to loop for as many times as you want. In this case, I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna get it to review the code one last time. Let's see if we can figure out any more improvements. Pass it to the programmer. Programmer will then program based on what the reviewer has said. So in this case, you wanna regenerate the code. We're gonna say yes again. Regenerating code based on code review feedback. And this time around, once we get the code, we're not gonna pass it to the review agent. So we're just gonna let it load here, let it process. There we go. And we're gonna say no. This time around, you will see once we build this, it'll build our entire Visual Studio project for us. So it'll say, review the code above, press enter to compile. We press enter, oops, we press enter. Building the game project, we have a successful build. And if we want to run the game, we can press enter again. And there we go. This is our little interesting uh, harvesting game. Uh, we have corn, wheat, potato, funny, raining. No idea what that is, uh, but let's can we fertilize or plant. Okay, we got to select the grid and then we can press plant. Uh, what happens if we press, okay, I'm guessing we have to, uh, let's see what happens if we change it to rainy. Okay. Oh, I've harvested some corn. So you can see it's, um, it's a janky game, right? It's a prototype, definitely a prototype, uh, but this works the same way as the old one in terms of now it requests user feedback. You can see here our console is waiting for this application now. If we close it, it'll now have a new message. Enter any additional feedback for bug fixes or new features. I've found that in this version or ChatGPT specifically, if I have an intermediate sort of uh, uh, like a, what I had in the previous one where we had the like the programmer that was responsible for fixing errors and the programmer that was responsible for features. If I did that in this chat GPT version, for some reason the code output ends up being really bad. So for any bugs or features, it all goes in one now. So uh, let's just say, make the game dark themed and make sure that all tech is white and then after we do that it'll go and do our generate it'll generate the code um and then it'll ask us if we want the code reviewer to review the code again so for this demonstration i will say yes for the first time but it's not necessary you can do this without ever showing your code to the code reviewer I would recommend doing it at least two or three times because it does actually make the code better. Um, so here's the code. Um, you know what, in this case, I'm just gonna say no. We'll go no. Uh, review code above, yep, building project, build successful, press enter to run the game. And there we go, I mean, it's made it dark mode. You can select the tile and go plant made the text for the corn uh white which looks very ugly on yellow uh and then i don't know what this rainy option does <laughs> but uh fertilize also seems like it doesn't do anything but we can last time we could harvest it there we go so once it's green uh you can harvest it so that's pretty good um we've got a completed project so this is sort of what i love the best about this it's created us an entire project so if we're done with the ai and maybe we want to influence it now we can open this project with visual studio it will add any dependencies you need for this project again this still uses gdi plus we're not using opengl yet um, while I'm in the experimenting stages of this, it's always going to be GDI as it's just going to be the easiest to get working with everything. Um, but we go view code. Uh, this is all our code. Um, so 
I don't know. What can we change? Maybe we change corn, wheat, potato to uh, corn can be apple. Um, yeah, the simple change. We'll make one change. We can click play. And just like that, our first item is apple. And I don't know if it'll... Yep, and I think it shows. Let's see if it changes color for a sec. Yep, apple. So just like that, not only has the AI created a project that works for one, but it's a project that we can easily edit as long as we have Visual Studio installed. Um, I will just note, you will need Visual Studio um, installed. Uh, I've only tested this with up to Visual Studio 2022. So if this isn't working with a higher version of Visual Studio, you might have to downgrade. The reason why it works uh, with Visual Studio only is because it uses processes uh, basically within Visual Studio to compile the game now. In the past, it sort of had its own compiler within the project, um, which is why it was a little bit diff difficult to end up compiling some libraries because referencing it ended up just being a real pain for me. Whereas now we're able to generate an entire project and just call a command on that project to compile the game for us, which is why it makes it so easy for us to just go in, open the project, edit the code, compile it ourselves. And then again, all our design summary is here. All our game idea is here. So if, uh, I'll just open up another agent here to just show you. But if we go load, it'll show our two projects now. The Flashborn zo uh, Flashburn Zombies, that's our second one now. So if we type one and go enter, it already has that game design summary. This is not a legacy project. Uh, so we can just say enter your feedback or changes and we can continue on from the project. Um, so it's super versatile now, I'd say. Um, another thing which, I mean, hasn't been shown in this version because it hasn't happened, um, but this engine does have a um, capability of fixing errors, but um, it doesn't, the way the compiling process works now, the console window for the AI agent game shooter, it's kind of impossible for it to retrieve the error of the compilation process. So what will happen is if it encounters an error compiling the game, the code gets passed to a error or issue reviewer. That will look over the code, see if there's anything a little bit abnormal and attempt to fix it by sending it back to the programmer. Once that's done, the programmer will then compile it and see if it works. Um, and it'll kind of keep doing that until it tries to fix the project. Um, so it does work very differently to the last one. I am yet to run into any serious compilation issues with this. And when I have, they've been very minor issues that I've actually been able to fix myself by going into the project. Like I said, because this is now Visual Studio Projects, if there's any issues, you can just double click the CS project file, open it up in Visual Studio, um, fix the error and load the project back into the AI. You, that like the AI will just grab any new code and use that as the base now. So the way this new version works, you could probably create some really in-depth systems. The only thing to note is the program.cs is the only file it reads. So if you end up creating new classes and anything like that, uh, it won't load them for the AI. It will only load the program.cs. So this is still a one file project, but it can still create more code that is stable um, over the older version that used Claude that split up the files. Because the AI knows basically every bit of the code instead of reading it in parts now, we actually end up getting a more stable output a lot of the time. But anyway, guys, uh, that's going to leave it here. A bit of a long video. I don't want it to go for this long, but there was kind of just a lot of information packed into it. Um, when you guys receive this uh, version of the AI agent game engine, uh, like I said, there will be a text file. It'll probably say API key.txt. Uh, you will need to put your open API key into that text file in order to use this. 
Um, again, it'll all instructions will be on the Patreon page for any patrons that want this. Um, and yeah, just uh, I'll leave our Discord, the Half Slash Studio Discord, um, down in the uh, down in the description. So if you guys need any help, uh, you want to share any projects you made. Uh, I am looking forward to what you guys come up with. Um, but yeah, just join that Discord and uh, come say hi. Anyway, guys, uh, I will see you guys in the next update. Bye now.